Beneath the peaceful surface of Europe's waterways lies a hidden danger. A colossal aquatic creature lurks in the murky depths. Over the last 50 years, it has colonized most of Europe's rivers, even the most pellucid. This oversized beast is a source of concern to scientists. We've seen the arrival of a new species, a very large predator, and the question we have to ask is, will there be an impact of this species on the other species that live here? This intruder has become the largest freshwater predator in Europe. And even hunts on land. In 2011, strange events took place in the River Tarn in southwest France. As they crossed the old bridge in the town of Albi, pedestrians reported large fish eating birds in the river. Frédéric Santour, a specialist in freshwater fauna, is leading the investigation. The point of this study in Albi is to examine a behavior that is very unusual. In a case that is fairly rare in the animal kingdom, of a species that lives in water, but which leaves the water on purpose in order to catch its prey on land. So which fish species is capable of coming out of the water in order to catch birds? Amongst the large freshwater fish, the carp is an unlikely suspect. It lives on vegetable matter, insect larvae, and small crustaceans. Pike, however, will eat prey up to half their size, and will even eat their young. The larger it grows, the larger its victims. Shrimps, amphibians, chicks, and even rodents. But for pike, like for most fish, leaving the water is extremely risky. In Albi, there is only one giant fish prepared to breach this lethal boundary. The catfish. Wells catfish appeared mysteriously in the town at the end of the 1980s. How does this aquatic predator locate birds or any of its other victims? Wells catfish have an amazing array of sensory organs that allow them to locate their prey. They have nearly a quarter of a million taste buds inside their mouths and on their lips, as well as on their whiskers, fins, and all over their skin. These work alongside their sense of smell and, in a way, allow them to taste at a distance. Their sense of smell is also highly developed thanks to multiple receptors in their nostrils, which have a separate entrance and exit, allowing water to circulate constantly. Catfish can smell certain compounds at one part per 10 billion parts of water. 
In addition, their swim bladder acts as a sounding board that transmits vibrations directly to the fish's internal ear. The Wells catfish also has three pairs of whiskers, or barbels, one mobile pair above and two below its head. They allow the fish to detect pressure waves emitted by their prey, so the catfish can detect them by the wake they leave behind. And finally, the lateral line that detects vibrations and low frequency sounds, particularly those made by animals at the surface. So catfish are incredibly well equipped to pick up any signs of their prey. Their senses outperform those of any other freshwater fish. The warmer the water, the more acute they are, far exceeding the limits of our perception in order to find food. Catfish feed mainly on other aquatic species, like roaches. When hunting agile prey, this massive predator drives them towards the natural frontiers of the river, the surface, or the shore. With so many prey, there is strength in numbers. Together, the catfish form a moving wall that pushes the panicking fish towards their final destination. For the first time ever, this footage shows catfish hunting together, much like the group hunting practiced by dolphins. But these attacks are not coordinated like those of marine mammals. The catfish work together, but they have no particular strategy, allowing some of the roaches a lucky escape. So what birds could be naive enough to be snatched in these muddled attacks? Fishermen attempt to solve this mystery for the scientists by removing the fish's stomach contents. At the beginning of spring, the catfish's bellies bulge with roaches and earthworms. In order to gain more information, Frederick Santel's laboratory also takes a number of stomach samples at different seasons. In the middle of summer 2010, one lab student made a strange discovery. This foot is not webbed like a duck's. It could belong to one of the river town's regular visitors, the wagtail. But genetic analysis shows that this is the foot of a very common bird. The pigeon. The 
These diurnal birds have a varied diet and feed on our waste. Their survival depends on humans. The more people, the more waste, and the more pigeons. They seem to have found the ideal habitat in the center of Albi. Pecking at the crevices of this 11th century bridge, they find all the salt their bodies need. Pigeons have been feeding off this mortar for more than a thousand years. But the salt makes them thirsty. There's no shortage of water, but it's not easy to reach. The town of Albi is built right to the edge of the river Tarn. Around it, humans have created a vertical world. Luckily for the pigeons, the summer heat coincides with a drop in the river's water level. Upstream from a wooded island, the current has created a pebble beach. It's an ideal spot for pigeons. While they usually only drink 2% of their body weight in water each day, that figure triples during the summer. As do the appetites of some other local inhabitants. that are able to detect the pigeons' movements from a distance. Their senses are on red alert. Their barbels detect vibrations from the pigeons' movements. Their nostrils smell the grease washed from their feathers. The catfish are drawn inexorably towards the pigeons. But they are hindered by the shallow water. Their prey is so near, and yet so far. Unlike pigeons, catfish barely use their eyesight at all. When their other senses tell them that the birds have left, they swim away and keep their distance in deep water, well out of sight. The catfish are nowhere to be seen. So after a few minutes, the thirsty pigeons head back to the empty beach once more. Pigeons are sociable birds. If one takes off, others soon follow suit. They depend on each other for their survival. Catfish, though, depend solely on their extraordinary senses, not on each other. When it comes to hunting pigeons, catfish are territorial, only tolerating others of a similar size between three and five feet long. As the pigeons drink and bathe, the fish circle round, always in a clockwise direction.
waiting for any signal, any movement. Catfish are unable to locate a motionless pigeon. And a lone pigeon is more anxious, more aware, and more cautious. In order to catch a pigeon, the catfish needs to find a bird that is both confident and distracted by the presence of others before beaching. Lunging onto the beach is a dangerous business. The fish risks stranding itself completely and dying slowly under the summer sun. In order to make its getaway, it must keep its tail in the water. Wary pigeons are protected by the gentle slope of the beach. The catfish's attacks seem to be hopeless. Patience is the key. If the fish lay siege to the beach long enough, a pigeon will eventually commit a fatal error. Stepping into deeper water, or turning its back on the catfish. Some catfish have become specialists. Up to 80% of their diet is made up of pigeons. These fish have the ability to learn. Their apprenticeship is based on trial and error. And by imitation. Catfish are copycats. The catfish in Albi still only achieve a 28% success rate despite multiple attacks. Scientists estimate that one pigeon would feed a four-foot catfish for 60 hours. Which explains why these medium-sized fish jealously guard their hunting territories. It also explains why the very large catfish that are found in the area have never been seen hunting pigeons. The food source is not significant enough and the risk of stranding is too great. Frédéric Santoul is still astounded by this new behavior. 
The main elements that we've learned from this study are that a species has made a major adaptation to a new environment and also to a different period of the day, because normally the catfish feeds at night, but here the pigeons are active during the day, so the catfish have adapted their activity in order to come and feed during the day.